welcome to my channel. Well, if you hear the sound of running water, it's because there's actually, we actually had some rain. And I, I like the rain because uh, water is good. We need water. And it helps cool things off. But what I have here is a third peasant knife um, that Toby and family sent me. So thank you for that. Now this is the large size one or the regular size one. They make a mini, and I've heard that the mini is better. You know, a lot of people swear by the mini for daily carry. Some people don't like, you know, the size of this regular size one, all right? And I've got some other knives to compare it with, but it says right here, available only to first-class peasants. Are you good enough to be a first-class peasant? It's made in New Zealand. Comes in this kind of like cardboard box. And, or sleeve. See, now that's minimal packaging there. That's about as minimal as you can get. You know? The cardboard, it isn't even a box. It's a sleeve, so. Kudos for that. Those of you that like minimalist packaging. Alright, we'll look at the... Uh, Instruction here. Oh, you get to register this stuff. <laughs> I think it, they're inexpensive knives, so I don't, I don't know why you would feel that you need to register it. But anyway, you're, it's warranted against for life, against material failure. Then they tell you it's sharp. And that you can cut yourself. If you need a demonstration of how to cut yourself, I can provide that. A recent video there on how to do that. Register your warranty. Make sure you maintain it. Adjust the tension of the blade pivot screw to suit your preference. Now, I haven't used this at all. I've opened it a couple of times, and I will tell you the pivot's pretty tight on this one. You want to be able to open it one-handed. It's part of the uh, appeal of it. Develops a natural gray oxide patina over a period. Man, it is coated in... Cosmoline or Vaseline or whatever, it's it's coated. It's it's not rusting. Smear vegetable or mineral or gun oil. Keeps the knife sharp. Sharpen a knife. This is, tells you how to sharpen a knife. Hear ye, hear ye. Yeah, so... <clears throat> We're talking about it being an old concept. It's one of the oldest designs of a knife around. It's like predates even Roman times. The the Foley pocket knife. I'll put a picture up of one. But um, they found one in Austria that was like five or 600 BC. And they think it was from, there was a nearby salt mine. And they think a, a salt mine worker used it. But... Uh, they're they're inexpensive the design is fairly simple you know a lot of people say well this is too thick or the handles are plastic uh, these screws you know come apart you know and all you got to do is use the handles as a blank for you to carve out whatever you want wood plastic it's not going to break look at this it doesn't even have a back spring well, that's how simple the design is. Just two pieces of stuff with a spacer in there. And hold it open while it's open like that, maybe. And then, like I said, it's coated. It comes fully coated. I'm going to wipe it on. I don't have a cat anymore. I can't come... Here, kitty, come over here. <laughs> i got to wipe this grease. Here, here, here. Here, it's good for you. We'll preserve your coat. <clears throat> Alright, so let's do our first cut before we do anything. See, what I like about this is, and people complain about that tang, but, man, this is about one of the safest knives you can hold as far as, you know, a non-locking knife. This is the way to go. And for people that, you know, wonder why this might look familiar, see that on a rust lock? A lot of these people that say they invented something. I don't know if Tony Bowes ever said he invented, you know, this. But 
that's what this tang is. You know, it's it's the same principle. Yeah, he put it on that knife and everything. This is a BPS Savage. Here we have a Higo Konami. You know, it's the same type of peasant knife type feature. No back spring. This is just the metal bent around. But it's the same concept. It's fairly easy to use. Inexpensive. Now, you know, your regional examples of stuff, you know, might be like uh, the Kudu. Um, here in America, it would be more like, you know, possibly some kind of side buster. Man, this guy's got a, a strong lockup on him. See, now this one relies on a spring for the lockup tension and everything. So you don't have this tang sticking out, but, and, you, and you've got a good purchase on it here. That's why I say these have kind of like evolved. They're more compact. They basically get similar job done, but they don't have this big tang sticking out. This big tang is helpful, though, if you want to reach in your pocket and find it. And you got this little loop here you can pull it by. Um, also, you know, here's a, a regular size Barlow, so it's considerably, you know, it takes up more space than a Barlow, but you get more blade. Let's see what kind of a blade we've got on this one. I think it's like a three inch blade or something. Yeah. You got a three inch cutting edge on that. This little bar I think is only like two inch. So yeah, you lose, you know, when you go down in size, you lose a little bit. But this is more like a work a work knife. I don't think they're very expensive. Um, so if you lose one, it's it's no big deal, you know. And uh, it looks like it has a pretty good convex edge on it. Like I said, I haven't cut anything with it yet. I'm going to cut a little piece of curd beard here. A little piece of curd beard. Don't cut your fingers. Don't cut your fingers. Oh, wow. It just pushes right through it. Yeah, that's nice and sharp. Let's cut a piece of certified paper. This is certified to be real paper. Oops. Cut my finger. Little drag. Um, it could use some strop and everything, but it's got a convex edge on it. Yeah, it's got some... Oh, man. That sucker is... A very, it comes to a very thin point there. Looks like they did a pretty good job of it. Yeah, you'd want to wipe some of that off. You won't have to worry about this thing flying open on you and everything. It's friction fit enough that it's not going to come loose in your pocket. I mean, really, I have to, uh, I have to push on this one pretty good to get it open. But it's easy, you know. Common screw right here. Yeah, it's just on one side. Common screws. Boom. Off comes the handle. Pretty easy to maintain. There's nothing lube, you know. You don't have to worry about what kind of bearings you got. And all that. Oh, it looks like it does have a nylon. Yeah, that's just optical illusion. Almost looks like it had... Nylon washer or plastic washers, whatever. The texture's grippy enough; it fits in the fits in the hand fairly well. Got plenty of room. Let's see how long how long you are, and give us your give us your dimensions. See now that tang makes it go up to like seven inches closed, but you're really only occupying. About five and a quarter inches. Now, like I said, they they make a mini version, which will probably be about like this size. But it'll be more pocketable. See, I have cargo pockets. I just drop this in, just carry it around a little bit to see what it'd be like. And uh, I had no problem with it. And this little tang helped it kind of like stand up right instead of just bottoming out in the bottom of the pocket. So... You might find advantages or disadvantages to it. 
Um, let's see. Yeah, so compared to other things, you know, like this guy fits right in the hand, and this is not, you know, like the cheapo um, peasant version, but you you can get the ones from Joker, you know, that are, that are non-locking and stuff. But if it's non-locking, I want I would like to have it some kind of have some kind of tang there, you know, because for a folder. If you don't have a lock and everything, that's why these things come in handy. You don't have to think about, is it locked or is it not? You know, if it's open where you can grip it, then it's locked. And it's not going to close on you without you knowing it, you know. Your hand, your palm would have to rip apart, you know, or something. Um, but yeah, these are pretty cool. Like I said, this is just my initial evaluation of it. A lot of people will go with, you know, like an... You know, because it's smaller and it's got a hair in it. See, it comes with a hair. There's a hair in there. And this one you lock this way, you know. So it's something you have to do, but you can't really do this one one handed too easily. You know, it's possible. But these are easier. You know what you're doing. And then the thing's loose enough. You just get up here in a lever. And you don't have to worry about it coming back and chopping your hands off. Oh no! Half stop. Ah! Half finger. So yeah. Yeah, they're pretty cool. These are pretty cool. Lightweight. i got to figure out what... we got to weigh him in. Weigh in. Please check in for weigh in. Mr. Sword Peasant, you are required at weigh in. I'm going to turn this on. We're in ounces. What do you guess? I'd say two and a half, maybe three. Ooh, not even that much. Disregard nine these ounces. initial readings. Modage, are we in grams? Or was I in ounces? No. What the hell's wrong with me? Let's get up here where we can, everybody can see, and I won't have to guess at this. What is that? What does that say? Count. We don't care about Count Dracula. Do weight. We don't care about that. Grains. No, it's nothing we can use. Grams. There we go. 58 to 59 grams. Get off there. Quit resting on him. See, he was cheating. He was trying to get off the scale. 70, 69.58 grams. How many ounces? 2.4. See, I was right. We're on some odd, weird scale. That's why. Make sure it's zero. Yeah, it's zero. So, yeah, two and a half ounces, and you're getting a three-inch blade. So, those of you that like an ounce, an inch, or whatever thing, this goes under that rule. Yeah, and... If you think these, uh, the handle's too wide or whatever, if you work with it, man, usually something that fills up your hand a little bit better comes in handy. If you get something narrow like this, it's going to be all right, but it, your hand's going to fatigue after a while if you start using it a lot. That's why these are, you know, a little bit thicker a lot of times. Even this work knife, it's, it's a little bit thicker in hand because it comes in handy. Smaller knife, you can get stuff done, but it's going to swirl around in your hand. You're going to have to try to control it more. This one, all your fingers rest on there. How'd your knuckles get dirty? I don't know. Mm, mm. There. Self-cleaning. You just rub it across the leather thing. And these are all right. They, these, you know, kind of fill the hand and everything, and it's got that swell to help keep it from slipping out of your hand but like i said this is just a little bit easier to deploy it's not as thin of a blade i have to you know adjust this pivot to make it open up a little bit easier but for right now it's not bad maybe it'll wear in a little bit there you go 
I'll let you know uh, more about it. I'll show some cutting later on and stuff like that. But for right now, I'm going to upload this video and uh, listen to the rain. That's pretty cool. Um, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.